Capping resistances is the biggest noob trap in last epoch. This is because enemies have penetration instead of dealing their full damage and you reducing it. It's basically the other way around for the math equation. Therefore, when you are fighting a level 18 lightning monster that does pure lightning damage, for example, and you're also level 18, then having more than 18 lightning resistance literally gives you nothing because the monster can only have 18 penetration, basically setting you at equal footing. This is capped at 75%. So this means that a level 100 monsters are only going to penetrate 75% of your resistances, which means hitting 75% is still okay, but it is not going to do much more damage if you are at 74%, unlike other ARPGs, for example, because again, the math equation is basically the other way around, and therefore the percent damage intakes are gonna be a little bit lower with the variant that Last Epoch has chosen for their elemental resistances. What's really important here, though, is that you can be brought below 0% if, for example, you have 40% fire resistance and you are fighting a level 100 fire monster, then you are going to go into the negative, causing you to take more damage that way. Even if you would be at 75% on all of the resistances, it's still possible that you get reduced below zero, causing you to take more damage because enemies can actually shred your resistances. And in this very specific case, this would only be countered by having more than the cap resistances of 75. So if you would be shredded, let's say, to by 15% uh, all resistances and you had 90 to begin with, you would still be at 75. This is not really necessary because stuff like armor and dodge and more importantly health is going to be a much more important stat than overcapping your resistances because again the math equation here is basically the other way around and since the resistance pool is so big and you actually have seven different resistances although physical is basically always active the amount of times you are going to encounter one of the single resistances is going to be a little bit lower since you have a much bigger variety of monster types this actually just increases how effective health itself is going to be because that is literally going to cover all of the damage type instead of just covering necrotic like necrotic would do. So instead of getting necrotic resistance, most of the time it's actually way better to just get more health. Common mistake number two is actually vendoring your items. As you can see here, we have found a very crazy amulet with four stats and it's even exalted. But the value it's going to sell for is actually 113, which is basically nothing. So I see a lot of people still picking up stuff and then vendoring it for literally eight gold. As you can see right here, this idol is absolutely not worth the time of picking up and then going to the vendor and then selling it. What you should do is literally just leave it on the ground to save some time and get to the end game way quicker where you can earn way more gold in a way faster rate than selling this idol for eight. By generally picking up less items and having maybe a more strict item filter, especially later during the game's progression, it is also going to save you some time because you don't need to go to the vendors very often or empty your inventory into the stash or get, sell it to the vendor. What you actually should instead do is you shouldn't go to the vendor anyway, maybe to buy the runes of shattering or look for other gear, but not for the purpose of selling. Instead, what you should do is you should always put the very good items or items that have very good affixes on them in your stash so you can come back to them and shatter or remove the very good affixes that you are looking for in bulk to save some time. Another very important thing is to not stay too long in monos or their separate echoes. As you can see here, I'm literally just running straight up to the objective, almost ignoring everything. Well, I mean, my build is a little bit suited for doing that because it leaves behind the damage. So you don't even have to be there to kill enemies, but still you shouldn't really go around and kill every Every mob to increase your stability, it's way more important that you collect the end of 
echo rewards, namely tomes of experiences or epic shards or maybe even unique items in this egg right here. And then you open the chest and then it's instantly time to go to the next echo so you can grab these end of echo rewards faster and faster leveling up because that actually equals more loot per hour which makes your character stronger which then equals even more loot per hour and as you can see that is just basically stacking on top of each other and it's just going to catapult your character's progression tremendously. Very important are also your weapons because usually you will find stuff like this where you have increased void damage with a big number attached to it which usually is not really what you are looking for on your weapons because on the weapons it's very easy or very important as well to get flat physical damage for example or flat void damage and not the scaling stuff so this prefixes the increased void damage would ideally be something that would be increased physical damage but the other thing the plus 20 melee physical damage that is really the kicker here for the weapons you are really desperate to find these flat added values because on the weapon these are actually easy to find and easy to craft whereas on all of the other item slots you are not really able to get very high flat damage because usually it's very easy to find scaling or increased stuff on all of the other slots for example on this ring we would have increased cold damage which could obviously also be physical damage but finding the flat damage is extremely tough on everything else besides weapons so obviously you should gravitate towards having the good stuff on your weapons as you can see here on the le planner on max roll i will have a quick example here on the prefixes on the exile code if we type in physical for example because we are looking for flat added physical damage there is actually nothing so is the same for almost all of the item slots but if you check out the weapons and type in physical you can see that we not only have the scaling which is available on a lot of other pieces as well but the very important flat physical damage and that needs to be on both of your weapons all of the time obviously Physical is just good for my build that I'm currently playing. If you need void damage, for example, that obviously also works. But these are then obviously also going to be very rough to find on other gear pieces. So it just makes it very important that you have this damage modifier on your weapons. I'm going to be blasting a lot of Last Epoch, actually racing in the hardcore SSF race, trying to get to 100 very, very quickly. If you're interested in that, I suggest you check out the Twitch link down in the description below. And if you like content similar to this for Last Epoch and Diablo 4 and every future ARPG that is coming out, I suggest you subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.